All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to talk here about purine synthesis and degradation. And primarily here in this first part, we're going to talk about purine synthesis. Uh, so I split this up into two parts because, as you can see, there are a lot of clinical implications, both as far as pathology and in pharmacology. So I want to give this its uh, due time, and uh, I really want you to hone in on the implications of this pathway. This is one of the more commonly tested pathways as far as biochemistry goes on the USMLE, so it's worth your undivided, undivided attention. All right, let's go ahead and start. So uh, as you can see here in this box, it says HMP shunt. What does that mean? We're talking about the hexose monophosphate shunt pathway. And this pathway gives us something called R5P or ribose 5-phosphate. Let me write that thinner here. So ribose 5-phosphate. And ribose 5-phosphate will combine with ATP and it gives us a very important product. And this product is called PRPP. And that stands for phosphoribosylpyrophosphate. That's a mouthful. Just remember PRPP. Now, the enzyme that does this is fittingly called PRPP synthase. Now, this is the rate-limiting step in purine synthesis, in de novo purine synthesis. And so you'll want to know this enzyme because with any enzyme that's a rate-limiting step, it can come up on, on the exam. Now, there uh, is one big thing that inhibits this enzyme, and it's purines. And that makes sense. This is a feedback inhibition. You're making stuff. The things that you make is going to slow down the process because you're making it. If you already have what you, you're trying to make, then you don't need to make as much of it. So purines are a feedback inhibition for this enzyme. Now, PRPP undergoes a variety of transformations through multiple enzymes, and ultimately it becomes IMP, or inosine monophosphate. And this is really the grandfather of all purines. Inosine is not used in DNA, uh, but it is a precursor for some of the nucleotides that, in fact, are used in DNA. Now, this step is, or these collection of steps are important because this process is, is mediated by folate. So you need folate to be able to go through this process. And this makes sense because one of the things uh, that can lead to megaloblastic anemia, for instance, if you're not able to make DNA, is folate uh, deficiency. Now, one of the things uh, that we use to reduce the synthesis of DNA uh, and thus reduce cellular pr proliferation is something that inhibits folate synthesis, uh, which we'll come back to in a little bit. Okay, so as I mentioned, IMP is sort of the grandfather of the purines, and it can go in one of two ways. It can be converted into succinate. which itself then can be converted into AMP, and that's adenine. And IMP can also go to XMP. Now, XMP is made through an enzyme called IMP dehydrogenase. That's another enzyme worth knowing. We'll come back to that. XMP then is converted to GMP. Okay, so there's your pathway. We have the phosphoribosyl pyrophosphate, or PRPP, which gets converted through multiple steps into IMP. IMP can then go to AMP through adenylosuccinate. IMP can also go to XMP through IMP dehydrogenase, which then goes to GMP. Now let's talk about the clinical implications. First of all, what is something that inhibits the folate pathway? I did a talk on the folate pathway, and you should be familiar with the fact that one of the medications that we give that interferes with the folate pathway is something called oops, methotrexate, often abbreviated MTX. Now, what does methotrexate do? Well, what it does is it blocks the convergent, conversion of dihydrofolate to tetrahydrofolate. And the enzyme that's responsible for this is called dihydrofolate reductase. And it's 
methotrexate that blocks dihydrofolate reductase and thus decreases the availability of tetrahydrofolate. And if you have decreased avail availability of tetrahydrofolate, then it's going to interfere with the synthesis of purines. Now, there are other places where where tetrahydrofolate absolutely works. This is just one of them. And so this is one of the ways that methotrexate will uh, will block cellular proliferation, and it's why it's given as an immunosuppressant. Now, another very important drug that's given that's commonly tested is something called mycophenolate. And mycophenolate blocks this IMP dehydrogenase, and that's why you need to know this enzyme. So mycophenolate works here. And so you may be asked which of the following nucleotides will be uh, will, will be found in decreased amounts if you have a, a, a cellular uh, culture that is um, cultured with mycophenolate. And you've got uh, a list of uh, the different nucleotides, and you'll be expected to know that it's GMP or uh, guanine that's going to be reduced. Uh, so that's one way that you could get tested on this. Uh, so you'll want to know this particular enzyme, IMP dehydrogenase, is blocked by mycophenolate. Now, the last thing that I want to bring up is the fact that AMP and GMP, while they are purines and they do block the rate-limiting step, PRPP synthase, they also block at these steps here. Now, you don't need to know the enzymes uh, for IMP to... Uh, to AMP, those two steps, uh, but you do need to know the IMP dehydrogenase, and that, of course, is going to also uh, be inhibited through feedback inhibition by GMP. All right, so that's purine synthesis in a nutshell. Um, again, I would focus on uh, where these drugs work. Uh, so you'll want to know methotrexate with the folate pathway, and you'll want to know mycophenolate with IMP dehydrogenase. There's really no big diseases here. As we're going to see when we get to, to uh, purine degradation, there are, in fact, diseases that come up there. So we will talk about that in our next video.